Today we're going to be deriving the quasi-geostrophic height tendency equation. Let's get started. Hello and welcome back to Master Meteorology Advanced, the educational weather series diving into the math and physics that drive weather. In today's video, we're going to be deriving the quasi-geostrophic height tendency equation, one of the most important equations in all of meteorology. If you're looking for the video that goes into the terms and symbols and explains the height tendency equation, you can find that one on my channel. In this video, we're just going to be deriving it. So, how do we derive it? First, we start with the quasi-geostrophic thermodynamic equation and the quasi-geostrophic vorticity equation. Basically, throughout this video, we're just going to be making manipulations to these two equations, and then we're going to put them together, and what you end up with is the height tendency equation. So this is our goal we want to get here. As you can see, lots of terms and symbols. So once again, if you want to understand this equation, go to my channel and find that video. So the first thing we're going to do, step one, we're going to start with the quasi-geostrophic thermodynamic equation. Here you see that is change with respect to time. This is going to be advection, temperature, some constants, omega, which represents vertical motion. And whenever you see a J, you know that's the diabatic term. First thing we're going to do, ignore that diabatic term. So that's going to get crossed out. This right here is going to come over to the right side. In step three, we're going to define chi equals d phi dt. Now, this is something that we do in both this equation and when we're defining or deriving the omega equation. Oh yeah, if you've seen the deriv derivation video for the omega equation, all these original steps are going to seem the exact same because they are. So watching this again is going to be a great way to reinforce your learning. So we're going to define chi equals d phi dt. In step four, we are going to rearrange the hydrostatic equation for t. You can kind of ignore that middle term right here. So we just have d phi dp equals negative rt over p. What we're going to do, we want that t by itself, so the p is going to come over to this side, and that negative r is going to come down over to this side. Here you see that's exactly what happens, negative p up top, r on the bottom. Next thing you can do, I bet you could guess, we're going to substitute for that t in the quasi-geostrophic thermodynamic equation, which with what we just solved for t. So you see, that t just becomes that. So far, nothing too drastic, nothing too hard. In step six, we are going to eliminate negative p over r. Here you see there's a negative p over r here. There's a p over r on the right side. So we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to bring that r over to the right side, the negative p over to the right side. You can see those are just going to cancel out. And the negative stays. And we are left with this. In step seven, we are going to expand the terms. So when I say expand the terms, I mean just like you would in a normal multiplication problem, you're just going to distribute these two things into the d phi dp term. So when you distribute d dt, you get d dt d phi dp plus that advection term goes in, advection d phi dp, right hand side stays the exact same. In step eight, we're going to reverse the order of partial differentiation and rearrange. Now, that's kind of a mouthful, I could barely even say it, and you probably think, ah, oh, that sounds difficult, but it's really, all you're gonna do is take that dp, put it over there, take that dt, put it over there. You're just gonna switch those two terms, and then you're taking this, your advection term, and putting it over on the right side. Once again, nothing too difficult. And then, Remember in step three, we defined chi equals d phi dt. We're going to substitute that in. Where do you see d phi dt in this equation? Right there. So we're gonna substitute that in. That just becomes a chi, and then we're gonna put it in with the d dp. So you see that right there just becomes d chi dp, and the whole right-hand side stays the exact same. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this equation one. We're going to hold on to that, remember that equation, or you don't actually have to remember it, I put it back up on the screen. Next up, 
we're going to manipulate the vorticity equation. So here you see the quasi-geostrophic vorticity equation. And if you're wondering where we got that, I derived it in another video. So you can check out my channel if you want to see that. Basically, we're going to start with that. Step two, we're going to define vorticity. That's the symbol for vorticity. And that sub G means you're dealing in geostrophic terms. And we're basically just going to define that as 1 over F Laplacian phi. That's just what vorticity is. Next, we're going to substitute that in to the quasi-geostrophic vorticity equation. So everywhere you see that vorticity symbol, we're going to substitute in that. We'll start with this one because it's a little easier. You see that vorticity symbol just becomes that. Where it gets not too tricky, but when you plug this in to the left-hand side, you see that we kept the phi and put it over the dt, and then we put that Laplacian on the outside. And then the 1 over F0, usually all the constants always stay on that left side. Step 4, once again, we're going to define chi equals d phi dt. Step 5, we're going to substitute that chi in for d phi dt. Where was it over here? Right there. So that's just going to become a chi. And you'll also notice that the F sub 0 came over to the right hand side. It's no longer an F sub 0. Now there's one there and that f sub zero became f sub zero squared. And we're gonna call this equation two. So we have our equation one, which we got by manipulating the thermodynamic equation, and equation two, which we got by manipulating the vorticity equation. Now we're gonna manipulate them even more and then combine them. So we're gonna multiply equation one by f sub zero squared over sigma. Take that equation one, multiply it by that. Nothing too difficult. The one thing to look out for is that sigma right here is going to get canceled out. So that far right term is just F sub zero squared omega. Next up, we're going to differentiate equation one with respect to pressure. All that means is you're gonna put a DDP in front of each term. See, that is the same right there but now it has a DDP in front of it. Same with that term and same with that term. Next up, we're going to add equation one and equation two together. So now we're calling this equation one and we have our equation two from up there. You see the left-hand side becomes the left-hand side when they're added together and the right-hand side is this whole mess of symbols and terms. But luckily, there's going to be a couple cancellations right there. They look a little different when you look at them at first, but if you distribute that omega into the DDP, you see that they're actually the exact same thing, except one of them is negative, so we can cancel it out. And what we are left with is the quasi-geostrophic height tendency equation. You see, there's two things to look out for that you might have noticed that I did. One, this chi comes out of the left-hand side and we isolate it right there and those all stay the exact same. So that's pretty easy, we just take the chi out. And the one other thing to look out for, this happens in both the tendency and omega equation. For some reason, we like writing that negative d phi dp as a negative. So you see that it was positive there and it's negative there. So how do we do that without it being illegal? we make the outside negative. If you think about it, if you were to multiply these two negatives, it would just make those two positives. And that one just stays negative. The reason for that is a little unclear to me. For some reason, meteorologists just like seeing that d phi dp as a negative. So to recap, we started with the quasi-geostrophic thermodynamic and vorticity equations, made a bunch of manipulations, added them together, and ended up with the quasi-geostrophic height tendency equation. As a reward and thank you for watching the entire video, I'm giving you a free PDF download of the video slides so that you can go back over the material, and a free PowerPoint download so that you can go through it step by step. You can find those resources by clicking the link in the description or by going to holthanleyweather.com. As always, if you learned something new in this video, 
click subscribe so that you can learn more in the future, and click more videos to start that learning now. Thanks for watching.